to Sunday AM and uh, our second video in our very short uh, series that we're looking at, The Ways of Jesus. If you didn't catch last week's, we're just looking at three key things that we see that Jesus does in his, his time with us on earth that we think that is so important to put into practice in our lives. And as I said last week, there are so many more. The Bible, the Gospels are full of things that Jesus did that we should be in awe of uh, and want to strive to have as part of our lives. But we're focusing on these key three themes, as I said. And uh, last week we looked at silence and solitude and, and how that time alone with God is so important that Jesus did it so often. And this week we're going to be looking at something directly linked with that because we talk in silence and solitude, we're looking at kind of silent prayer. But our key theme we're looking at is the broader aspects of prayer and how Jesus prayed and when he prayed and why we should adopt the things that Jesus did, the ways that Jesus lived. Do you know what? Prayer is so key to our relationship with God and we say this so often to you guys as young people, prayer is vital. Nothing works without prayer. The church is based on prayer. The early church we saw it's one of the key things that they did, they prayed together. And we need to continue doing that, praying together as a church, but praying individually in our own lives. And there's lots that we can learn um, from Jesus within this. Do you know what? Uh, there are some key facts that I'd like to quick, quickly give you um, around prayer in the Bible. 650 times prayer is listed in the Bible. There is a prayer li listed or mentioned in the Bible. There are 450 records of answered prayer in the Bible. There are so many more answered prayers, but 450 um, recorded answered prayer in the Bible. Prayer is first mentioned in the Bible right back in the book of Genesis, right back at the start of the Bible. In Genesis 4, it is brought up. Before that, that Adam and Eve had direct conversations with God, but after that, it's mentioned really early on in the Bible, this, this need for prayer, the importance of prayer. And as we're looking at the ways of Jesus, it's listed 25 times in the Gospels about Jesus praying. There would have been so many more. The Gospels are almost like the highlight stories of Jesus. They're not an in-depth, they're not a not step-by-step -step guide of everything that Jesus did. They are the key stories, what the author of each Gospel is trying to get through to its audience. Each of the Gospels is written to a different audience and, and there are different kind of pictures they're trying to paint about who Jesus is to that group of people. And we know him as the Messiah and the Christ, but there's pictures being painted by the author 25 times in the gospel. As I say, that isn't all the times that Jesus prayed, because Jesus, we can see in the gospels, has a rhythm of prayer 25 times in the Bible. We see in the gospels in particular, Jesus is mentioned either praying or talking about prayer. So if Jesus did it so often, if it's mentioned right back in the book of Genesis, if it's mentioned 650 times in the Bible, if we read about 450 answered prayers in the Bible, is it not something that we should be adopting as a lifeline to the way that we live our lives? Let's look today and dig deeper in As I just said, 25 times it's mentioned in the Gospels about Jesus talking about or praying himself. And here are some examples of when that happens at these moments. And these are verses that you can go and look up during the week to dig a little bit deeper into it. And we're going to focus um, at the end on one key verse. In Luke 3, 21, at Jesus' baptism, Luke records that Jesus prayed and then heaven opens. Jesus prayed and then heaven opened, Luke records. In Mark 1, it says that Jesus got up early in the morning and went out to pray. Jesus knew the importance of starting his day with prayer, and we need to look at the same. 
In Matthew 26, 42, he prays in the garden of Gethsemane for the Father's will to be done. In this pain, in this anguish, Jesus prayed. We said last week that Jesus sought silence and solitude and then he absolutely did. And then he prayed to the Father, your will be done. And for me, this one really stands out. The fact that on the cross, Jesus prayed for other people. And it's recorded in Luke 23, 32, that he says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. In Jesus's time of great pain, we can't even imagine the pain that Jesus was in at that moment. He says, Father, forgive them. Jesus prayed regularly. Jesus knew the importance of prayer. He was connected with the Father, but he knew the importance of speaking to him, of developing and continuing to show us how to develop that relationship with the Father. We need to have a rhythm of prayer just as Jesus did. Maybe prayer is something that you struggle with. And I talk to plenty of young people going, oh, my prayer life's not good. I don't really know where to start. I don't really know um, how to kind of get in that habit of it. Well, the beautiful thing about the Gospels is that Jesus showed us exactly how to get in the habit of it. His disciples didn't know. And the people following him and listening to him teach one day didn't really know how to pray and ask him to show them. And we must never overlook the importance of the Lord's Prayer as a guideline for us to pray. Jesus left it for, for the people listening and he leaves it. It's recorded in the Gospels because it's important for us to know that and how to pray as well. So important. And this is what's recorded in the NIV version that I'm reading from. And you can find this in Matthew 6 and it's verses 9 to 13. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. The Lord's Prayer isn't something that we just learn when we're kids. It's a guideline for how to pray, especially when we don't feel like we've got the words. If you want to get into a rhythm of prayer and don't know where to start, start by reading the Lord's Prayer daily. Speaking those words to God because it's so important. Because it gives us a guideline, as I said. It starts off with praise. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Maybe they're not the words that we use today, but God in heaven, you're great. You're so good. Bless your name today. Start our prayers with praise. Then we pray for his work on earth. His kingdom to come, it says, your will be done, your kingdom to come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. After we've praised God for who he is, we should be praying for his kingdom to be known on earth. Praying for the people that we want to help, for people that we know that we want to come to know him. Praying for him to be glorified in everything that we do. We praise God. We pray for his work and for people to come to know him. We can then bring our needs to him. Father, we pray for our daily bread. That's something, daily bread is what they, they're talking about, what, what, what we need. We need food, we need things, and we, need to, we can pray. We can ask God for the things that we need in our lives. That's good. If it's his will, he will, he will give us those things. Praise God. Pray for his work on earth. Ask him for the things that we need. And pray about our daily struggles. We've all got them. We've all got things that we struggle with and find difficult. And it says in the, in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
Pray for those things that you're struggling with, your anxieties, your schoolwork, um, your friendship groups. We can pray about these sorts of things. These key things, and there are more. Um, I just haven't got the time to go into them this morning, that we can break down about the Lord's Prayer. So many more things. But if we start our prayers with praise, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Glory to you. Pray for his work. Pray for the th pe people, um, the things that we want to see happen on the earth. Bring our needs to him and pray about our struggles. That's what we can learn from the way that Jesus taught us to pray. And we know it's important because Jesus did it. As I said at the start of that, maybe you find prayer hard. Start with the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to do that at the end um, in a different way. We're going to leave you some space to fill in some gaps on the screen. So hopefully you can pray at home and begin to put into practice this rhythm of prayer. But just to wrap up, some key things to remember today. Prayer is necessary. If you want to get into the you get into your into want to get into get into the habit of thinking that prayer makes the world go round. Nothing works about prayer. It's a necessity, and Jesus knew that, and the ways of Jesus show us that. Who we pray to is powerful and loving. He loves us unconditionally. And we're praying to the God who loves us, but who brought the earth and everything in it into being. He is powerful. Prayer, and lastly, prayer was a practice of Jesus. It's a practice, the thing that he did. It's a way that he lived. And he even gave us the guidelines, the blueprint of how to do it when we don't know how. We're going to pray together and I'm just going to put some um, words on the screen that hopefully are going to give you room to, to begin to pray yourselves in this way, in this, this guidelines that Jesus gave us. So let's pray together, but have a wonderful week. God bless.